I remember the first time I was hearing Bashar formula, I was like, wow, this is going again, this is going against everything I've learned in business. But it was making sense. A part of me was like, he's right about this. You know, and, and it, I don't know how to explain it, but it was a felt sensation of like, wow, this is how things are going to unfold more easily because I've tried the other route, you know, planning, strategic thinking, like, and the plan looks great, you know, and on paper, it should work. But in reality, when the rubber meets the road, like we say, well, the plan usually doesn't fly out the way we planned it. There's just so much wisdom that is being stored in our DNA and in our hearts as soon as we're coming back to the pure presence with ourself, all this knowledge, all these ideas, all this passion, passionate energy is actually free to show up. It reminds me of a, a concrete example. Like I, I do a leadership workshop in large organization and, and they were talking to us like they had a big breach at some point and they were three hours talking to each other, trying to figure out a solution and no one could find a solution. And then people were disarguing and It was a mess, basically, for three hours. So one person said, you know what? We should take a pause. They took a 15-minute break. They came back. They found a solution right away. The trees are not asking themselves, are my leaf are going to grow? Are the leaves going to fall? No, it's a certainty. You know, like this is the cycle of life. So the more we connect back to nature like as within, so without, as above, so below. So if nature is like that, and we are nature, basically, we also have these cycles and life is taking care of us. Something is taking care of us. So we're uh, going to unfold in the perfect way. So when we get out of the way, now we can unfold in the perfect way because we stop trying to control everything. It's like pulling on flowers so they grow. It's like pulling on leaves so they grow. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> It has its perfect way of unfolding. People are fooled into thinking that there is something out there that's going to bring them the magic answer for their own happiness and their unfoldment when in reality, there is no such thing. All the big, the big richness and the prosperity lies within and it's just waiting to be revealed to us it's to create more model so people can actually see people that are working with this way of interacting with the world oh i'm going to change my belief system and then if i change my belief system my old reality will change the way i'm taking decision will change the way i'm interacting with myself will change i'm going to become more kind, benevolent, compassionate towards myself. So then I can be like that with others. And I think the world needs to see more models of that versus the models that most people see on the media, in politics, in businesses. We don't have a lot of people that are leaders, I'm talking about, that are operating with this level of consciousness. Greetings and good day. This is the channeled truth. I'm your host, Thomas Lyhart, and I'm a channeler myself, and I love exploring the works of Seth and Jane Roberts, Abraham Hicks, and Bashar. And with me today, I have a very special guest that's been on the show before in episodes 11 and 18, and he's returning to have this incredible conversation about this whole idea of slowing down to speed up. 
we live in such a go-getter culture. It's go, 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 action, action. And even as we listen to Bashar, right, it's all about taking that action. And so we want to explore that mysterious paradox as the Taoists would say the Wu way, right? The, the non-action action or effortless effort. Right? It's that quality of action that you drop into and you really are acting on your passion. And it comes up as this, this, this expression in our language, right? It's, it's a labor of love is no labor at all, right? It's, it's effortless, right? So we want to explore that mysterious quality of sometimes pausing and sometimes slowing down in order to speed up rather than just getting really frenetic and trying to accomplish everything at this 3D physical mind level. So without further ado, let's bring Jean-Francois onto our digital stage here. He is a, a uh, holistic leadership coach. Uh, so you want to introduce a little bit about yourself and get us going here? Yes, thank you, Thomas, for having me again. It's such a pleasure to uh, build and co-create the, these conversations. I'm, I'm glad that today we're talking about slowing down to speed up. It's certainly a topic that I've been exploring personally in my own life uh, in the last four months, actually, well, five months now, May 23rd. Time flies since the beginning of the year. I've been more uh, intentional about taking these pauses, even though my body usually doesn't want me to, to take these pauses. My Different parts of me are like, oh, you should keep on working. You should keep on doing this. You should do this. And like they're basically stacking up my to-do list. And every time I don't listen to these voices and I actually do take a pause and slow down, whether it's to do some Qigong, whether it's to do some breathing or taking like a 15-minute walk in the wood with my dogs, Every time I have these epiphany and these connecti connectivity that happens, I start connecting the dots to places where I thought I was efficient, but I was not efficient, or I was trying to solve like a problem, but I couldn't get the answer. And then all of a sudden, the answer appear out of the blue or that person that I needed to talk that I completely forgot that I needed to talk that just pops back into my mind. And then sometimes this conversation would lead to another thing, which is exactly what I needed. Absolutely. So, yeah, can you relate to that? Oh, absolutely. The way this show came to me was literally I was walking the dog and I had been... <laughs> I had been working with another individual that just kind of pulled the plug on things and literally disappeared. We don't know where he is, right? And then I was sort of, you know, distraught and wondering, well, what, what? It's a sudden vanishing act, right? And I was out walking the dog and poof, it came to me. It's like, just do your own show. It's like, oh yeah, of course. And the name came to me, The Channeled Truth. And I was just like, wow, there's the next idea, right? I didn't have to figure it out. It was kind of figured out for me. It was already just part of the path. All I had to do was just relax, you know, be out with the doggy. You know, they have this amazing energy. Dogs are just like spiritual masters in their own right, right? And just click into that. And all of a sudden it's just poof, like, oh, here's the next step. It's obvious, right? There it is. But you have to be in that frequency bound and not trying to figure it out, right? You have to actually surrender, let go, slow down, and boom, there it is, right? Totally. Yeah, and, and it's, in a way, it's so counterculture when you think about the culture of like business, of having to do plans, having to design steps, having to uh, put yourself deadlines of when and how things are going to be, which is actually totally. going against the formula of Bashar. And no insistent on the outcome and when and how it's going to happen. So I remember the first time I was hearing Bashar formula, I was like, wow, this is going against, this is going against everything I've learned in business. Totally. But it was making sense. A part of me was like, he's right about this. You know, and, and it, I don't know how to explain it, but it was a felt sensation of like, wow, this is how things 
are going to unfold more easily because I've tried the other route, you know, planning, strategic thinking, like, and the plan looks great, you know, and on paper, it should work. But in reality, when the rubber meets the road, like we say, well, the plan usually doesn't fly out the way we planned it. Like one of my mentors used to tell me in, uh, I started my career as a personal trainer and uh, we were learning periodization, how to write down training program for athletes, for them to perform at their best at the competition. But my mentor, Charles Poliquin, told me, you know what do you, do you use the most in periodization? And I said, no, your eraser. <laughs> you need to erase the plan that you draw and rewrite it, rewrite it, because athletes get injured, they get sick, they, life happens, you know? So they cannot follow the plan that you wrote. So you constantly need to adapt your plan to the circumstances. Absolutely. And, and really what we are talking about here is the third part of the formula, right? No insistence on the outcome because we get really locked into, oh, it's got to look like this. It's going to look like that. Oh, I planned it this way. Now something else happened, right? It's that feeling sometimes to your physical mind, like someone pulls the rug out from under your feet, right? And now it's like, well, the plan's gone, right? It's a, completely irrelevant. And what do you do then, right? That doesn't mean what I've realized is it doesn't mean don't plan at all, right? Because it's all right yeah. to plan, right? Because if you're excited to plan in that moment, great, like do, draw it up, right? Maybe that gets the juices flowing, right? But then be willing to just completely let it go, right? Don't get married to the plan. The plan is, it's an exercise for getting the energy moving. Once the energy starts moving, sometimes the act of making a plan raises your frequency to the point where it renders the plan obsolete, right? So you have to just, just be willing to let that go. So that's the whole idea of Wu Wei, right? That whole idea, it's effortless action, right? It's like you're moving forward and it's like you're riding on a surf, uh, surfboard, right? You're riding this wave and you, got, you have to constantly respond to that wave that you're riding upon, right? So as soon as you get rigid, poof, you're, you're off the surfboard, right? You get knocked down and then you catch the next wave and that's okay, right? But if you can maintain that fluidity of mind, then you can be agile and just flow with the change and with the currents. And that's the joy we signed up for, right? If our plans always worked out, we'd be kind of bored, right? We'd be like, oh, uh, surprise me, right? Give, where's the button I hit for like surprise, right? Because everything's, you know, we, we like the surprise, right? We like the expansion and the growth and the challenge too. Totally. Yeah, and, and on this idea of planning, uh, what I transitioned from two was like rigid planning, uh, my mind building the plan and based on all my beliefs, AKA all my limitations <laughs> that it were actually used to build the plan. So now the way I plan is I let the plan unfold. Mm -hmm. So I don't rush to have the full picture from the first draft. I let the plan unfold. And sometimes the plan is going to take two weeks, sometimes going to take two months to unfold, you know, but I found that when I let it just unfold in the pauses I take and the meditation that I do, and I don't force it and I just let it come, most of the time it actually happened and a lot faster and with more power and excitement as if I actually wrote it with my mind with my limited program. Yeah, I, I love what you're tapping into is coming back to slowing down to speed up, right? Letting it unfold, right? And so that means being comfortable with not knowing, right? You have to train the mind or, or relax the mind into that point of like, it's okay to not know. It's okay to not know where the flow is going because there's periods where it just seems like we're, we're in the wuji, you know, we're in the void, we're, yeah. we're in this still still point right we're in this equanimous neutrality zone and that's okay because sometimes you have to shift gears right so here's a great metaphor right you got to go into neutral to shift gears and i find myself periodically just going into the still point going into pause and now i'm at peace with it right it's like you slow down into that void you go into that space of of non-duality right and then you re-emerge as a new person you shift into that higher gear and now 
you have maybe you're working on the same project but it's just at a different frequency band right and you couldn't have pre prepared or pre-planned for that you just got to roll with it just got to be comfortable with unlocking so that you can relock to that higher frequency totally yeah and there's just so much wisdom that is being stored in our dna and in our hearts as soon as we're coming back to the pure presence with ourself all this knowledge all these ideas all this passion passionate energy is actually free to show up because we basically removed all the water that was dirty with all bunch of stuff that we did not you know think about when you do the dishes you know in your sink and then the, at a certain point like the the water gets completely clogged like you don't see anything and then you're trying to wash dishes but it doesn't wash anymore because there's too much dirt like so you need to clean the water and put new water in so flushing like the paws i think about uh doing the walk you know with the dog you know we're kind of like letting go of the energy that was present and clearing the canva and clearing the water so something new can emerge out of it new color can can be present so something new can emerge out of it yeah it's like i uh, as i'm as we're talking i'm seeing it's like the physical mind is this box and it has you know it has incredible value but sometimes we have to step outside of that box so that we can receive like you said information from you know the resonance of the heart you know the resonance of the dna as you put it right it's like there's other levels of intelligence that we need to tap into right that's why when we take that pause we do the qigong we do the meditation we do the we take the walk right we just feel it we just feel that urge to slow down to take a pause boom that's when these incredible ideas come to us solutions to challenges right it's like the whole that whole einstein thing right um i I won't, i won't quote him exactly right but it's like yeah, the solution exists at a different frequency band at a higher frequency level than the problem at which you're so if you're yes. just chewing on the problem you're, you're in that same frequency band so you don't see it so you have to take a step back you know go go into the void go into the wuji go into that quiet walk on the beach watch the sunset and just let the universe speak to you and speak through you right channel it right you're you're connected to infinite intelligence right so 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 use that pause because the pause is when that information can come in uh so that you can pick it up with the physical mind and run with it again and, and take the action again yeah and, and i as you're speaking it reminds me of a, a concrete example like i i do a leadership workshop in large organization and uh, we had a group of people who were in charge of like all the security in the business and they were talking to us like they had a big breach at some point and they were three hours talking to each other trying to figure out a solution and no one could find a solution and then people were disarguing and it was a mess basically for three hours so one person said you know what we should take a pause they took a 15 minute break they came back they found a solution right away that's perfect you know? so imagine like all those brilliant minds they weren't able to find a solution and it took only one person who said you know what we're not in the right state here just go and take a pause and then reconvene do other things stop thinking about this problem have fun look at the tree go take a walk go take a breather take a sip of water, whatever, but don't think about the problem anymore to create space for it. And then bang, they found the solution right away. So this is an example of like, wow, you see how much money this could have cost the business if they kept on going. But in our personal life is like, oh, how much are you resisting to your own self? How much are you blocking this true wisdom from coming to your attention and then this opportunity to take that decision that will change like the course of your life you know absolutely it reminds me of that saying you know the physical mind is 
you know, a beautiful servant, but a terrible master, right? So yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, when we start letting the physical mind run the show, that's when we start getting into trouble, right? Because we we're starting to cut ourselves off from infinite intelligence speaking through us and we just get locked in. We start chewing on the problem and we can't we can't shift the frequency because we're so locked into it, wrestling with it, right? The solution is so close at hand, right? Like you said, just even just taking a pause and taking a few deep breaths, that already begins to change, you know, the electrochemical uh, arrangement of your energy and biological, yeah. you know, physical being, right? Uh, breaths, we say, is one of the regulations of qigong besides, you know, posture and intention, right? Very powerful, right? It's it's sometimes so close, and yet we're so far away by just chewing and chewing and chewing on on the issue and stewing on it. Part of it is also that question that Bashar sometimes asks, do you trust the way your life unfolds, yeah. right? Sit with that for a while and just let whatever comes up. Sometimes your negative beliefs are just there telling you, you got to control everything. You can't trust people. You can't trust the flow. Uh, how are you going to surf that wave if you can't trust where that wave is taking you, right? You're going to start getting anxious and, and you're going to you're gonna wipe out, right? So, so you just, that sometimes you got to come back to those fundamentals, right? Do you trust the way your life unfolds? Do you feel that you have value because you exist? Because if you're already valuable, you're not striving for value. You already are it, right? And you just let value come through you because you already are that and you flow it into the world and it's beautiful and it's dare i say magical just just you because you're tapped into infinite intelligence right but if you got that oh i'm not sure i don't trust or I, i'm going to insist on this outcome now you just get all rigid and tight and you know wipe out right yeah t totally right and on that specific topic one thing that really helped me to trust in life was to reconnect with nature mm. Because nature is a perfect show of life unfolding in the perfect way. Yes. You know, I live up north in, uh, in, in Montreal and we have the four seasons. So we see like the leaf growing, we see the leaf blooming, the flower opening, and then we see the leaf going down, you know, and like the, the trees being bared again. So every year... The trees are not asking themselves, are my leaf are going to grow? Are the leaves going to fall? No, it's a certainty. You know, like this is the cycle of life. So the more we connect back to nature, like as within, so without, as above, so below. So if nature is like that, and we are nature, basically, we also have these cycles and life is taking care of us. Something is taking care of us. So we're uh, going to unfold in the perfect way. So when we get out of the way, now we can unfold in the perfect way because we stop trying to control everything. It's like pulling on flowers so they grow. It's like pulling on leaves so they grow. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> it has its perfect way of unfolding. Absolutely. I love how you brought the word certainty in there because it's like you just you ride that wave and you let it unfold, right? And I'm glad you brought in the Four Seasons because that is such a wonderful metaphor and representation of that cycle, right? There's a letting go cycle in the autumn and going back down into your core, into your essence in the winter, right? And so we always have these cycles in life where things come to an end, a project comes to an end, right? Like my yeah. example in the very beginning, suddenly something shifted, right? And I went into the void, into the winter, into that space of going within right? A relationship might end, you know, maybe it's a working situation might end, you know, something changes, right? Or actual physical death of a physical being, it's like someone yeah. close to you, right? You have these transitions and you trust, right? When you trust the way your life unfolds, it's like you go into that space of, oh, now I'm single or, oh, now I'm, you know, in between projects or in between jobs or in between focal points, whatever that is, whatever that might be. Even uh, the physical death, right? With that, that closure of the physical relationship, you start realizing, and this has been very true for me, like the relationship continues at another level, right? And you start having connections to 
your ancestors like like we talked about in your in the last episode right episode 18 we did together right you start realizing energy continues everything continues it's just in a different form the form changes and you get less attached to that form because you trust the next form is coming and you don't yeah. mind the pause in between the forms because you trust everything is an upgrade right and the old forms need to pass just like nature shows us right you drop the leaves let go of that season so that the new season can be reborn right yeah totally and that reminds me of uh dr joe dispenza's saying about um the unknown he said i never been disappointed by disappointed by the unknown and i found really interesting when i heard that for the first time i was like huh that's interesting and i thought about have i ever been disappointed with the unknown and my my answer was the same as him no i never been disappointed by the unknown you know like every time i walked into the unknown i've learned so much so either i grew or i met a challenge that was necessary for me to get on the next thing but this is one of the thing that i gave myself permission to take risk and walk into the unknown and you know taking a pause is going into the unknown mm -hmm. because you don't know what's going to happen in that pause, right? <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen on that walk. <laughs> But if you keep on working and you keep on doing your to-do list, you know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> That is certainty versus uncertainty and unknown versus known. Yeah, I, it reminds you what Bashar says, right? The only thing you'll discover more of in the unknown is more of yourself, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just just being able to walk into that and having a degree of comfort with that not knowing space right when you unlock when you shift gears right it's just just being able to kind of it almost feels like you're floating in the void and sometimes yeah. people get very disconcerted by that but that is part of that process of unlocking to shift to a higher gear because otherwise you just be stuck in the same reality And yeah, we say misery loves company and people, you know, but that's all coping mechanisms, right? When we just seek to recreate yeah. that same habitual place, right? It's like the person in a miserable relationship that's afraid of being alone, right? So they'll settle for this, even though it's clearly dysfunctional, right? Or the work relationship, whatever it is, right? It's that quality that gives you incredible power when you can step into the unknown because now you can walk away from that which no longer serves you, right? to release other individuals, to find the people that they resonate with, right? To be able to unlock is incredible power. It gives you that ability to stand in the void and just let life unfold, right? What I've discovered is, you know, it's like we have a theme of exploration and if we just relax into that, it unfolds. All the best things in my life just miraculously landed in my lap, right? I didn't have to like run and pursue and chase, right? And when I am chasing, I'm starting to recognize more and more, that's probably not my theme, right? Because yeah. I'm having to run after it and go get it, right? And there's a quality of just being in your power and just, just it, it unfolds, right? You know that, that, that click, that synchronicity versus the, oh, I'm just exhausted running, chasing after this person or this condition and you think you're going to be more somehow when you get it instead of realizing you are that and letting it flow to you and through you. Yeah, it's it, well, it's so counterculture, right? Everything nowadays, it's gra instant gratification. It's like fast, 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 consumption, 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 social media, Instagram, magic pill, uh, magic formula. It so people are fooled into thinking that there is something out there that's going to bring them the magic answer for their own happiness and their unfoldment when in reality there is no such thing all the big the big richness and the prosperity lies within and it's just waiting to be revealed to us We don't have to get something out of out of herself in order for this to manifest. It's the other way around. But 
it's easy when these things like Instagram, TikTok, all these platforms, they are built to get you hooked on it. So you don't even realize that you've been scrolling for an hour or two hours. Yeah, or you're looking for more viewers or more clicks or more hits or whatever, yeah. right? That's yeah. the trap. Exactly. It's like you come back to, I have value because I exist, right? If you wouldn't have value, you wouldn't exist, right? You're a valuable portion of all that is the grand symphony of life. You are it. And so manifest from that and let it come to you through effortless action rather than chasing something because you think that you'll feel better in the having of it, right? Abraham, they'd really drill into this part, right? It's like running after something because you think you'll feel better by having it. It's like turn it around and connect to your value first and put the cart and the horse in the right alignment, right? And then just let it unfold from that sense of value. It doesn't mean there'll be no action because certainly sometimes you take incredible action, but again, a labor of love is no labor at all, right? You're in that frequency bound. It unfolds, it's effortless effort versus, oh, I gotta get it, I'm chasing it, I'm not enough, let me go get more, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Where does the action comes from? What is the belief system that prompted the action? Because if it was from a fear-based belief system, well, you're going to get a fear-based response. So you're not, what you're going to get out of it is not going to be from the highest potential that you could be. It's going to be what it is, but it's not going to be in alignment with your highest potential. So even winning the lottery might not be in alignment with your highest potential because this is not your team. And it's going to bring you a lot more negativity to bring you back on your team and on the track that you're here to explore. Yeah, and likewise, you can take massive action, right? And many people have gone through that, right? We've gone through the oh, manifestation, yeah. the massive action. I can make it happen. Yeah, look at me, I, I, you know? Right, like in the business world. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I did that extensively. It's common, right? But then you realize, you know, at some point you realize it's it's kind of empty, right? Or maybe it's that that was a stage of development and you're you're notching up to another level where it, it, that's not important anymore, right? It's yeah. now it's like honing that passion, right? That frequency in your heart space and radiating that, which is, you know, why I appreciate your new title, right? Holistic, holistic leadership coach, right? It's like you're shifting that paradigm, right? So maybe have a little bit to unfold on that. Yeah, for me, um, the leadership uh, classic teaching is so rooted in, okay, you have this formula, you're going to do this, do that, this one, two step process, and then things are going to work, you know? And so in um, developmental term is trying to apply a technical solution to an adaptive challenge. So the adaptive challenge is like, in order, let's say, to be a better leader, to be more effective at delegating and at inspiring people, it's not about following a formula of like, you need to say this, you need to say that uh, at this moment to that person. No, it's about knowing who you are as a person and what are your fears? What are your learning edge? When are you going to take the fear-based decision instead, instead of owning uh, what's true for you and taking your courage and speaking what's truly, what truly matters for you instead of just um, settling for what the groups want you, wants you to be. But really being the leader and really the pioneer of this era or, or your department or your business. You know, I see so many leaders that are playing it down because they are fearing that people will reject them, that people will actually think that they're less than, that people will think that they lost their mind, they lost their edge. So they're always settling for less. And it's all about looking at the different dimension that is helping us as human being to actually be the best version of who we are. And it actually starts with the physical body, you know? It starts with like, what do you put in your mouth? How do you move? 
What's your sleep hygiene? You know, how much water you drink? Like the basic stuff, because if you are not mastering this, well, you're going to get triggered a lot more easily. And then you go into protective mechanism and you're all about your own, saving your ass, self-protection instead of inspiring and motivating others and bringing them to collaborate together and creating new ideas, creating innovation. So I like this is something that I like to bring people back. It's how's your physiology? And most of them have a really poor health hygiene. They are not managing their physical energy well. So it's not really worth it to think to talk about like the how you can optimize uh, the the way you're going to do things if you don't have enough energy to do it, and if your physiology is always in survival. So even if you know all the knowledge, you can't even apply it because you're in survival. You don't have access to your prefrontal cortex. You're stuck in your limbic brain trying to save your ass. Totally. I know, I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> from personal experience, right? That survival mechanism is such a different place of like coming from anxiety, coming from self-preservation, yeah. you know, coming from like, oh, I'm not sure what people will think that I might get rejected like it puts the brakes on so much and I've spent you know a whole part of my life just being in that state and just this yeah. whole transformation process is just just coming into it comes back to that simple belief do you believe you're valuable right yeah well because when you have value what you want to do is share it you it overflows right so if you're feeling empty and you're in a leadership position, well, you're, that emptiness is always going to come in and you're always going to feel like, oh, uh, you know, what are people going to think? I need to people please or whatever it is, right? Self-preservation just kind of constricts, right? And so just tapping into that infinite flow. And it's like you said, it comes back to self, right? Self-realization, you know, the health of the physical mechanism, the health of the mind and the emotional body, right? All these different levels of being the spiritual body and just bringing your whole self into the picture, right? Instead of the limiting beliefs of, oh, I am not enough. Oh, I'm not worthy. Or who do I think I am? Or, oh, people don't like me, right? All these different yes. overlays and filters that just reduce your energy to a trickle, right? And then you wonder, why do I feel anxious? Why do I feel so tired all the time or depressed or frustrated yeah. and angry right while well, you're running at five percent right just like start taking reducing dissolving some of these filters and part of the way that happens is going into the void right going into the personal development time you know taking the time to you know to journal to to investigate your negative beliefs and just have self-accountability instead of like always looking to the world to reflect because all it can do is reflect and it's all going to reflect who you are right so you work on who you are and that radiates and then that shifts the reflections out there right exactly yeah yeah you're, to you're totally right and on that note uh and i think that is why you created the show as well it's to create more model so people can actually see people that are working with this way of interacting with the world oh i'm gonna change my belief system and then if i change my belief system my old reality will change the way i'm taking decision will change the way i'm interacting with myself will change i'm gonna become more kind benevolent compassionate towards myself so then i can be like that with others and i think the world needs to see more models of that versus the models that most people see on the media in politics in businesses we don't have a lot of people that are leaders i'm talking about that are operating with this level of consciousness absolutely it's it's really really minimal i have a hard time actually telling you one person in mainstream that is operating with that level uh, of consciousness yeah, and that's why we gravitate to these channelers, right? Like Bashar, he really represents yeah. that energy, right? And, you know, like it's like a role model. It's like a template, right? And we look at that and, oh, here's something I can, I can you know, look at. And, uh, you know, it's like having that sense of, you know, how, how does my vibration, 
you know, resonate. And here's an example of someone that's really in their element and am I in my element, right? And then also just using the tools. But, you know, it's not, it's, it's like what Bashar says, it's, here's what I'm trying to say, is just reading his energy, right? It gives you like a template. And then there's the teaching, right? But he's teaching by example, right? Which is kind of what you were saying too, is we don't have those examples as much, but we are becoming those examples for others, right? And we find the, the examples that work for us. And it's like, you know, we're, we're each helping each other. And, and as one elevates their consciousness, it reverberates through the collective consciousness and it gets easier and easier, right? When I was growing up, this was a much harder slog than it is now, right? It's just, yeah. it has continued to gain momentum, right? As we each all inspire one another. And so one last thing I wanted to, to bring in here before we close the episode is this whole idea of, you know, the secret behind the secret, right? It's like we can circle back into that because people have for a long time been really caught up in manifestation. I'm going to manifest this, I'm going to manifest that. Right. But it's like coming back. The secret behind the secret is like that quality of coming back to the still point. Right. To coming back to who you are and creating from beingness, from suchness, curating from that still point and letting it come to you and letting it be effortless effort. And instead of just like that whole massive action, oh, I'm going to visualize, I'm going to go get it. And, uh, all, you know, it's like it's just getting into that relaxed space and letting your theme unfold like this beautiful, brilliant, powerful, glorious mandala of creation, because you are that you already are that. So hopefully this episode inspires people out there. Certainly we enjoyed making it, you know, may it inspire you into just being more of that true authentic self and let it radiate and let it inspire others and let yourself be inspired by others who are radiating that frequency each one teach one and in lockstep we we move together into the unknown but into more of ourselves so with that we will sign off and wish you a fond glorious and a great day <laughs>